Um, well, thanks so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be able to walk through um, our project that we completed with the EPA over the past 18 months. Um, so I can bring you through um, how the project objectives, how we implemented it, some of the challenges that we faced, but most more importantly, um, the positive outcomes that we had during the project. So um, our, our initiative was um, titled The Use of Food Waste Insights to Reduce Food Waste in the Commercial Kitchen. Um, so why did we want to worry about food waste in the first place? Well, as you may know, one third of all food that we produce globally is wasted. So that's all of the resources that also go into creating this food. And um, once it's thrown into the bin are also wasted alongside it. It hit food waste is a, an incredibly large financial and environmental cost to the planet. So we spend almost a trillion dollars every year on food that's purchased in globally and then wasted. And it's food waste alone contributes to 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So it's an absolutely enormous problem we're dealing with. In Ireland alone, we think of ourselves as a small country, but we waste 1 million tonnes of food waste every single year. But a quarter of that comes from the hospitality sector, and that's the sector as a company that we focus on um, and was the focus of this project as well. So the um, overarching um, objective for this project was reducing food waste through uh, food waste insights. Um, but I suppose how the smaller objectives along the way were um, first to create a database um, of the most wasted foods. So essentially, the objective was we we knew there was a lot of food waste happening and we wanted to provide the information to sites to say, you know, if you have too much broccoli, if you have too much fish, if you have too much beef, here are some um, suggestions and insights on what you could do with the surplus food to actually use it um, rather than it having been wasted. So we wanted to get a step ahead of the problem. The first step to be able to, to give these uh, insights was to find out well, what are the most wasted foods. We didn't want to just throw throw any foods at um, at the sites. We wanted to be able to tell them what are the, the 250 most wasted foods within a commercial setting so that we could give insights to go alongside that. Um, beyond that then, we... Um, we wanted to implement this program into 10 different sites um, across the country. So the selection process for finding um, 10 adequate sites and then actually tracking the food waste within those sites and then introducing food waste insights and then being able to track the food waste, hopeful food waste reduction from that point. And then also being able to see um, you know, what learnings we took from this initiative so we can then implement them into future implications for for positive carbon for customers we're working with for future customers as well. So uh, the methodology that we went through uh, for all of this, so I can bring you through um, how we did the data collection and um, how we created the insights and then how we actually ran the pilot program itself. So uh, first step was the data collection phase. This is the first six months of the project. Um, so for these 250 food types, we had um, two main strategies for, for collecting the data around discovering what those food types were. So the first was desk research. So we used many different sources to be able to look at what the most wasted food types were. Um, unsurprisingly, the EPA's own research was um, top of the, the pile for us um, having a look at that. We also used other sources from research papers and also the FAO do a lot of work, obviously, in this area. The other key part that we used was using our own technology. So Positive Carbon is a food waste monitoring company. We have devices that sit in commercial kitchens above a bin and we track all of the food waste that goes into those bins. This means we have a, a pretty comprehensive list of what foods are regularly wasted um, within the food waste setting. So we used a combination of our own internal data and then um, external data from, from the likes of the EPA. So once we had the 250 most wasted foods, uh, we wanted to start creating uh, the food waste insights to go alongside it. We wanted to have a five insights per food. 
Um, the reason is to have diversity, um, so having multiple suggestions for each food type. This is important as well because, and I'll touch on this uh, later on in the learnings, different kitchens act very differently and um, so we can't we can't assume that one insight will work for every kitchen because um of the way that they prepare food and and serve food we needed to have a variety of insights to make sure that we could cover a, a broad broad spectrum of the different food food businesses and um, again so to create these food waste insights we were we're building a, a large database of insights again the epa's own research and work was um very handy in this this stage of the project as well as input from chefs chefs are incredibly creative people they um they loved being able to give feedback on you know how they used and um, different food types to prevent uh, waste while working towards zero waste kitchens um, but as everyone is also probably aware, there was huge advancements in AI last year. And um, so that actually helped us hugely in being able to um, create uh, insights directly. So we could now build into an AI um, generated insights directly into our platform. So that was a huge leap for us. So this is what the result was. So for each of the few types, we were able to suggest um, five different uh, different insights for using it so um you know using leftover cooked potatoes that could be used into mashed uh, mashed potato cakes then being able to use uh, leftovers into soups scraps into turning them into hash browns um, and then again peelings being able to use to create uh potato like crisps essentially what i really like and want to get across I'm oh, sorry, I forgot fermenting potatoes as well. <laughs> it's always, you always want to have ferment, fermentation always comes around when we're looking at um, using every piece of a food. But what I really like about this example is how varied the insights are. So that for whatever business um, we're looking at, there's a suggestion that will hopefully work for them and a suggestion that will hopefully work for the type of food that you have. So not only are we looking at OK, you've already cooked a potato. Don't worry, we have a solution for this. You have, you know, surplus potatoes that you haven't touched yet at all. We have a solution for that. You know, you've used all the potato, but it's the skins left over. Don't worry, we have suggestions for that. Because ideally we are working towards, you know, a zero waste kitchen where every single piece of the food is going to be used. So, um, yeah, great variety, on the <clears throat> great variety on the insights. Then beef, again, the same, being able to transform leftovers into chili, repurposing trimmings to make um, stir fries, looking at beef bones, um, and then again, transforming leftover beef into either, you know, adding them to burritos or sauces. Again, just different suggestions for every piece of the foods so that we're looking at. Uh, if you have surplus, if you have scraps left over, or what you can do with the bones themselves. So the pilot program, we uh, carefully selected uh, 10 sites for um, to introduce the, the insights to. We For each site, we um, track their food waste data using uh, positive carbon sensors, and then we introduced the um, food waste insights along with um, significant training as well. So training pre, during and post um, the insight introduction. And then there was also, you know, weekly catch ups with the sites to um, check on their progress and also to gather feedback from themselves on what they liked and didn't like based on the, the insights so we could make continuous updates. And um, I'll touch on some of the challenges and some of the wins that we had um, for each of these sites a bit later on. But moving to the findings and um, so they were um, positive to, to start off with, which is absolutely fantastic. So for each of the 10 sites, we saw food waste reduction in terms of kilos and um, by 25 to up to 75 percent of between the sites over the pilot period, which is really, really promising. Um, across the board, we also saw reduced environmental impact. Um, what was really interesting about the reduced environmental impact was it wasn't always proportional to the volume of food waste. And this is a really important point that when we're looking at food waste reduction, we're not only just looking in the volume or, you know, the number of kilos we can get down. We want to be looking at the types of food that we're, we're wasting now. So, you know, 
Uh, we're a sustainability company, so lucky for us, the most expensive foods, your most financially expensive foods, are also your most environmentally um, impactful foods. So they tend to go down in proportion, which is which is great. Um, but there were some examples when you know food waste volumes plat like plummeted, but they weren't waste. Maybe they weren't looking at the exact uh, the most environmentally impactful foods. So it's always you know important to be looking at what foods you're also reducing. Um, Again, I touched on this uh, slightly before about the customized insights and, um, you know, different businesses are um, need different insights for different reasons. So having the varied insights was really, really important and um, so that we could capture, we could uh, cater for each food type, for each business type. Um, see here. And um, so in lessons learned and um, the site selection was a really, really important uh, lesson that we learned along the way. Initially, we had planned to work with uh, one operator um, across 10 sites. Um, but as we were getting going, we realized that we were setting ourselves up where we had essentially one, um, one point of failure, where if suddenly for some reason this operator decided they no longer wanted to proceed, we were suddenly down all of our 10 sites. So we made a change to decide to work with 10 separate um, operators. So it just meant that if one operator couldn't work, it, it meant a process of swapping out one operator rather than losing all 10. In terms of data sharing as well, sites were much more comfortable knowing that data would be anonymized. And um, although each site were, you know, absolutely fantastic on reducing food waste and um, you know, having actual stats out there, they would prefer it was just an anonymized system, but it did mean yeah. that we were able we were able to get the data out um, without any kind of slowdown on that yeah, side. So yeah. that was great. In terms of staff engagement, that was obviously hugely important. We were working with not only management, but you know, head chefs, operation staff, and kitchen staff. So um getting staff engagement was was really, really important. And um, the sites where staff were engaged took off a lot quicker. Um, and then we had to work a little bit more with with sites that were, were less engaged. But I think the overarching um, results show that, you know, food waste uh, reduction is possible in these sites um, across all those variables. So that was great. Um, and then the again, the customized insights and um, being able to have different insights for the different different uh, sites. Uh, depending on their priorities. Something that we found really, really interesting as well was, um, you know, different factors were also impacting uh, different sites um, in different ways. So an example of this was if there is a sunny day, um, any staff that eat within their um, work premises, so we work with some workplaces who feed staff, you know, their breakfast and lunch. If it's a sunny day, those staff leave these um, leave their workplaces in order to go out and sit in the sun and maybe um, grab lunch somewhere else. So that really impacts um, how many people they're serving that day. However, on the flip side of that, if it's a sunny day, um, the sites such as hotels um, are busier because people think, oh, it's a sunny day, let's pop out to the local hotel and grab lunch there instead of having it at home or, or in the workplace. So um, it's really interesting to see how different external factors impacted these different sites. Um, so recommendations that we would have after the entire uh, project was just continuous staff training engagement um, would be really, really important. Um, again, as I was saying, the, the sites that were more engaged um, had better performances as well. Um, so you don't want to just have that drop off. It should be a continuous, uh, continuous engagement, which then flows very nicely into having regular progress monitoring and feedback loops. So, you know, we don't want to just say, OK, well, we did a, a five month uh, pilot, let's take everything out again. It's like everything else. Um, food waste is the same if you can't manage what you can't measure. So we just need to be continuously monitoring and then giving feedback to to staff on what's working, what's not working. And then collaborative knowledge sharing, I think, is, is really important. We had we learned so much from chefs on the ground and um, who were using the insights and um, so to have a space where they can uh, come together and share ideas and suggestions together, I think would be really, really impactful. And um, so our outcomes in the short term and um, over the pilot project, we saw overall food waste reduction of almost 9000 uh, kilos, uh, which we were quite happy with. Um, and then we're also able to show CO2 reduction by over 21,000 kilos. 
our system can track the individual food types that are thrown into the bin and we have individualized carbon footprints for for each of those food types so we're very we're you know we're quite confident in in being able to show and um, that co2 reduction for those foods the outcome in the medium term then so when we take these results and we annualize them and um, i forgot my a in food waste there uh, oh it's, it's down there on the reduction apologies for the mistake there and um, so we can see annualized savings of almost 100,000 uh, kilos and then again we can see annualized co2 reductions for um of almost over a quarter of a million so this would be the short medium term what we can see in the next year and um, but again for all of these 10 sites they're going to keep up food waste monitoring reduction and these insights so we would hope to see you know continuous food waste reduction in in open the years to come uh, so i sorry i'm coming up to the end of my time so i'll go through these um quickly enough but all of these case studies are available online and um, so if we look at a recruitment company in dublin city center and um, they were able to reduce their overall kilos of food waste by 55 percent so you can see where uh, where the insights came in and there was a quite a good uh, drop and then they were able to maintain that um, and we can also see this is their carbon kilos of carbon as well so this you know reflects their food waste reduction quite neatly this is a um, professional service company in Dublin city centre and um, so they were able to reduce their volume of food waste by 40% over the pilot period um, and then also reduce their uh, CO2 impact in also a, a very similar fashion. Um, the last one I wanted to show you was a large retailer that feeds over 600 people a day and they reduced the overall volume by 50%. This is just them showing that they also were able to reduce their um, kilos of CO2 from 3,600 to 1,800. Um, so the next steps for um, what we would like to do with the insights is we're going to just continuously keep um, enhancing the platform. And so for those insights, uh, continuously update as we get feedback as it goes out. We want to get the insights um, out to as many sites as physically possible as well to make sure that they can keep having impact as we go. So we'll be scaling the implementation of the insights and um, industry awareness as well around um, food waste, uh, knowledge of food waste and then what the impact for monitoring and insights can have and then look at knowledge sharing events as well. So we've already hosted multiple um, workshops and presented at different industry events based on this project and um, but we'll continue to do that as we go forward and um, so thank you very much for your time and um, we really enjoyed working on this project with the epa so we just want to thank them for all their support and then especially to all of the chefs on the ground who worked with us throughout this period and gave us invaluable feedback so thank you very much